When you think about belief in God and understanding of God, what comes into your head? You're probably thinking about prophethood in Judaism, Christianity and Islam in the Middle East. Or you might be thinking about the other prophets in the Indo-Chinese region, from Hinduism, Buddhism, Confucianism, Jainism. But what about the rest of the world? Muslims are taught that our creator, God, sent prophets to every tribe and every race around the world. And in fact, we read in the Holy Quran, in chapter 16, verse 37, God says, and we did raise among every people a messenger preaching worship Allah and shun the evil one. Then among them were some whom Allah guided and among them were some who became deserving of ruin. Now in the same way, from the words of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu um, we hear a, a narration of a hadith from Ibn Hibban in which the Holy Prophet is asked, how many prophets were there? And he says 124,000. 124,000. There are so many more prophets that we don't know about and they appeared in every race, in all parts of the world. So let's have a look at what experiences people have had in different parts of the world. In Africa, religion is handed down as verbal tradition, oral tradition, from one generation to the next. It comes to us in the form of mythology rather than written scriptures that we're used to. But in each tradition, in each tribe, they do record elements of their understanding of religion. So the Fang of Gabon in West Africa, they have a saying that Anzame is on high and man is on earth. So they distinguish between their creator and humanity. In Ghana, the Akan tribe have a saying that God needs no pointing out to a child. So it's as we get older that we get distracted by the rest of the world, but children understand what their creator is. The Igbo tribe in Nigeria have a saying that as you plan for somebody, so God plans for you. In Benin, the Fon tribe record an account of the Day of Judgment, which is slightly different to ours, but the sentiment is the same. In the same way, in other parts of Nigeria, they will talk about the God of the mountain, the God of the river, the God of the trees, the God of the land. And if you ask them, are these all gods? They say, no, these are manifestations, but actually there is only one creator God, Olodumare. Olodumare has created the whole universe and everything that we see. Everyone's heard of the Aborigines in Australia. And actually the Aborigines have lived in the continent for over 50,000 years. Some historians are now saying maybe even 70,000 years. And there are hundreds of Aboriginal tribes across the continent of Australasia. Many of them have had very little contact for hundreds if not thousands of years. And yet they all talk about high gods. They all have that understanding about their position in nature and in the environment and with their creator. So there you have a, probably the longest unbroken tradition and they have a continuous and consistent understanding of religion. So we've looked at Africa, but what about here in Europe? I'm in London, in England. Well, in Europe, we've seen ancient religious structures like Stonehenge here in the UK or Hadjakim in Malta. And then in Greece, we had a long tradition of philosophy and Socrates who drew people towards understanding their creator and also their position within the planet. He was a prophet amongst the Greeks. Ethiopia has a rich tradition of religion going back over 3000 years. Even 3000 years ago, Queen Sheba married Solomon and their son Menelik brought Judaism back to Ethiopia, to the Aksum region in the north of the country. Then around 300, 350 CE, Ethiopia became one of the first countries in the world to adopt Christianity officially as their religion. 
And it was not long after that, maybe two, 250 years after that, that the first Muslim refugees had to leave Mecca and they went to Abyssinia, to Ethiopia, for their protection. Now, even today, I was in Addis Ababa a month ago and the Christians started their fasting a month ago. And they were so delighted that now this year, Christians and Muslims are both fasting at the same time. And they have a rich tapestry of religion which informs their behavior towards each other, their behavior towards foreigners, and their relationship with their creator. Everybody's heard of Confucius in China. Two and a half thousand years ago, he was a prophet who drew Chinese people towards wisdom. And he also talked about um, your life with your family, with other people in your community, and what you should and shouldn't do. But the fourth Khalifa, may God be pleased with him, also believed that you from 4,000 years ago was probably a prophet, and who she from 5,300 years ago could also have been a prophet. So China itself probably had a long line of prophethood going back many thousands of years. Many thousands of years ago in Egypt, they recorded a book called the Egyptian Book of the Dead, which actually is a narration of the Day of Judgment. In that, when a person dies, first of all, they have to respond to questions from the 32 deities or gods of the Nile, who ask them, did you steal? No. Did you commit adultery? No. And they go through various crimes. At the end of that process, they weigh your heart against a feather. And if you have been good overall, you go to heaven. If you have been bad, you go to the underworld and hell. Now, it's subtly different to what major traditional religions believe, but actually we all can understand that it's a very similar process of looking at your experiences, looking at what you actually did during your life and saying, overall, on balance, have I been good or have I not been good? And that's from over 3,000 years ago. So we've seen how people are experiencing God in so many different parts of the world. Islam tells Muslims to respect all prophets. Many of them are mentioned in the Quran, but there are many, many more. As we heard earlier, the 124,000. We don't know them yet, but if we find evidence of those, we have to respect all of them. And we have to respect the religious traditions of all people around the world. In many traditions, we see that ordinary people are expecting to converse with their creator through some kind of priest, some kind of shaman, some kind of intermediary. For Muslims, we are told to pray five times a day and to think of God all day and to have a direct relationship, our own direct relationship with God. So we've seen that these prophets came through the ages and to different nations. And yet, in essence, they brought the same message, the belief in one God. The messages got distorted over time, but in their original form, they were the same. This points to the fact that there is one supreme being who sent his prophets with the same message for the world to recognize him and to worship him.